In a world. Mate, hold up. We said we're done with the serious intros. Who said? Well, we did. I don't remember that. Well, I said it, and you're me, so, you know. Well, I don't care. In a world. Uh, hey, I told you. We're keeping it light. You do it on your own, then? Well, technically, I already am, so. Anyway, fuck yeah. Pure wild flight. Get it down, ya. Yeah. How good? Visit nzaerosports.com. I get to do the next one. Well, obviously, you moron, we both do. I was 19, broke, unemployed, and sold my girlfriend's canopy for drug money. So, I thought I'd better sew her a new one. What a sentence, and what a story. This describes the humble yet outrageous beginnings of NZ Aerosports, the home of Icarus Canopies, in the words of our founder himself. From getting a paratrooper toy from his mom, watching parachutes at the DZ as a six-year-old, jumping off the wharf with a parachute made from bedsheets, doing his first jump at 16, sewing his first canopy on a borrowed machine at 19, and starting to sell parachutes out of a garage in 1986, Paul Gyro Martin had an undying love for the sky. Our company started with one man with the wildest of spirits in a true blue sky dream, a renegade. In the time that Gyro created and ran the Icarus Canopies brand until he passed away in 2017, he pushed everything he had to its limits. We miss him and we always will. Gyro is the next generation of NZ Aerosports. It honors our founder, of course, because it was the name we all knew him by, but Gyro the rebrand also marks the start of a new chapter, our next jump. Gyro is the space between sound and silence, art and science, chaos and calm. Gyro is a state of epic tranquility that transcends understanding. That moment in the door, in free fall, mid swoop, where nothing but the present exists. A perfect balance of euphoria and thrill. Gyro captures our passion for flying and our commitment to designing break the fucking rules canopies that deliver pilots pure wild flight. Coming straight from the cockpit, it's another episode of Lunatic Fringe with the fucking pilot. Ready, set, go! Back in the can for another edition of the Lunatic Fringe podcast and a friendly new face on the other side of the screen. We're diving straight in. Who the fuck are you and what do you do? Hey, everyone. I'm uh, My name is Connor Meyer. Um, I'm a uh, newly uh, licensed skydiver relative to everybody that's been on this podcast. <laughs> um, so um, three years in the sport, really two, because in my first year, I uh, jacked it up um which i'm sure we'll talk about <laughs> i'm sure uh, we will <laughs> so uh my home dz though right now you know i jump out of western new york skydiving um there's also skydiving falls in the area those are the two basically western new york area and um more southern tiers rochester skydivers we all jump at all three but it's it's a good gang out here um me you know i i'm i'm not full-time yet um did just get my coach rating um so i'm starting to to dabble into that world and uh which is pretty amazing um mm. i mean there's really no better feeling than than getting to you know help somebody go down that path that you like sure that. yeah like everybody gets into this for their own reasons but they're usually pretty um pretty unique yeah, yeah uh, absolutely yeah so uh outside of skydiving though like i'm a superintendent for like an international elevator company it's called schindler um so i manage tax and a big portfolio for the Western part of the state. So a lot of running around everywhere, but um, that's how I fund my, you know, degenerate activities of chucking myself out of planes. All nice. Time. Nice. That's the real world, uh, real world penance you have to pay to be able to play in skydiving. You do, you know, you gotta, you gotta pay to play. You gotta pay to play. You I, do. I you do. Um, but you know, outside of that, I did uh, start my own business as an entrepreneur uh, a couple of years back. Um, what I did is, uh, I started coaching veterans. Um, 
Uh, I'm a veteran myself. So, you know, growing up, I, I grew up in Western New York, went to high school, barely scathed by, did a lot of dumb things, was, was a varsity athlete, but uh, a dichotomy at best. We'll put it that way. All right. <laughs> uh, without diving into that too deep, but got my shit together and ended up uh, going to a military college. It's called VMI, Virginia Military Institute. So um, had no freaking clue what I was going to do with my life, dude. Just hmm. was like, well, I got to make money. I don't know what I want to do. I'm, I guess I could be good at like this kind of shit and I need structure. So I Googled military and college together because I told my dad I'd enlist. He was a SEAL in the Gulf War. I told him I'd enlist and do that. And he's like, fuck you, Will. You, <laughs> you're fucking going to college, you fucking asshole. I, I worked my ass off to, to create you to undo, you know, my mistakes. So get your ass in college. I'm like, okay, I can't argue that. What an awesome opportunity, you know, to, to go to that. And um, ended up like getting into the ROTC shit. It's a senior military college. So they commission about half of their graduates every year into one of the five active duty branches. Okay. So you got Coast Guard, Air Force, Navy, Marines, Army. Um, now Space Force, if you want to be a space to that, bro. You know, uh, we'll flip around up there and, I don't know, shoot shoot bullets at the atmosphere. All right. Uh, but yeah, so I did that. Uh, ended up loving it. Got a bio degree because you need it and ended up commissioning as an officer in the Army. Um, so I was an infantry officer. I uh, did that for four years and got out one week before COVID. Like no shit, one week wow. before COVID started. I had my orders on. And thank, you know, it's funny how the universe works because, you, you know, had I just not gotten out at that point, right? 10 days later, the whole world fucking changed, man. And it like, did. you know, there was stop lot. You couldn't get out of active duty at the time. They, nobody knew what the hell was going on. They were, everybody was, you know, doing their best. Right. So who knows what life would have been like, right. Sure. Had I not decided to get out, but, um, amazing experience, you know, all that. And then, uh, basically got into, uh, the last three years, just everything was honestly, everything was shut down. I was losing my mind. My life went from a hundred to zero. Cause you know, being an infantry officer, we did a lot of fun stuff. I went around, did a lot of things. Um, and I took my ass to a drop zone cause I went skydiving once with an ex-girlfriend when I was like 19. I was like, dude, that was like, hey. oh my God, I remember that. And man, the rest is history, dude. I, I did a tandem two weeks later. I had an A license. You know, there's uh, the, there was this, uh, um, sense when COVID hit and I can only imagine if I hadn't been a jumper and a, a jump pilot at the time, there was a sense that it was all coming crashing down. Uh, and it was real doomsday there for a while. And and uh, I can imagine how truly attractive the opportunity to go huck yourself out of an airplane would be when, you know, you're rolling the dice at whether or not it's fucking coming to an end. Fuck it. Yeah. I might as well. <laughs> I, I might as well go start jumping. Not to mention everybody's stir crazy and you're just sitting around going, well, what am I going to be an alcoholic or a drug addict now? Because there's yeah. nothing else to do. You know, and that's what I was trying to avoid. That's why I told my mom, I'm like, mom, listen, I can chuck <laughs> myself out of planes or I can shoot up heroin. I don't know. You tell me, you make the right. decision. Like, no, she, obviously not, but it, it, dude, you're right. And it, it really wasn't like too, there wasn't some bigger meaning behind me showing up at the drop zone. Right. It was something to do that I, that I had a feeling would get my blood flowing. Sure. And, but the community, dude, that's that is what instantly snagged me. I mean, the jump was amazing. Like I, I instantly knew I wanted to do it on my own. I was like, let me get this dude off my ass, dude. I want to see if I can do this, which is way harder to do than people realize. Let's mm. be honest there. Um, and uh, everybody was just so fucking welcoming, dude. And, yeah. and just open-minded and just, it was such a beautiful energy there. And I was like, I need to be around this more. I mean, what are you going to sit in your house and stare at a wall? You know, I'm, I'm looking for a job. I just got out of the army. I'm like, holy shit. Yep. Mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of funny the, the way you put it. Cause uh, I felt the same way when I was starting out. Cause skydiving was, uh, it definitely made me nervous. I mean, I would be proper scared going to make those first few jumps, but I almost looked at it in now in hindsight, I definitely looked at it as though the jump was the price I had to pay to hang out with these fucking cool people. Like, oh, yeah. 
I <laughs> fuck. I really want to hang out with these people. Fuck. I guess I'm going to have to jump. You know, yeah. and of course, then it became, uh, oh, shit, I'm one of those people people come jump for, you know, because they want to hang out with. And it became this wonderful thing. But for sure, it was the the community that drew me in dramatically more than the jumping to start with, because the jumping scared the shit out of me. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it, you can't. The jumping is is defying your your logical safety mechanisms and, oh, yeah. and your body like just gets frustrated with you when you do that because it's like what the fuck are you doing like why i'm already in free fall like what's good and then you pull a parachute and it's like oh yeah well, every, yeah. you know it's it keeps doing that and you're like dude chill i got this you well know? you got uh, a, a million years worth of fucking uh human beings progressing telling you don't do this and one asshole strapped to your back saying let go of the door <laughs> you know <laughs> probably cracking jokes at you too on the way up like man i hope this opens oh, oh of course of course <laughs> all the hideous jokes that uh and i'm sure you probably felt the same way if it weren't for those shitty jokes i would have been twice as scared yeah no it, it, ti's do a great you know i don't know a ti that hates doing it mm. i i don't I, everybody it's they say it's the most amazing i don't have a i'm not a ti I, you know one day but it nobody has a negative thing to say you know and sharing that gift with everybody you just watch them it's fun like we all get to I, i've been in a wingsuit now so i get to chill and bang i'm like oh cool this is it's a neat perspective you know i know we're stupid assholes with dresses flailing around the sky i get it but like it's cool to sit in the back of the bus and watch uh that experience for people as they go out the door it's really sure now how did you get started in uh, was there anything uh extreme sports wise prior to jumping i mean i know the army throws some some relatively crazy shit at you yeah, the um, I've always kind of been, you know, chasing the dragon, as I like to call it, or just that next, you know, yeah, this this is a, a coin term, me and but you know, most of my friends are are still serving or veterans, and we all had very similar personalities that kind of drew us in that lifestyle, and you get a lot of jumpers who are veterans as well, for sure. responders. That. There's something to that that thrill, that chase. I've always been after it. So I did a lot of dumb shit as a kid, I guess you could say, if you want to call that yeah, <laughs> you want yeah. to call it sports. Um, uh, but no, I was like a lacrosse player, um, you know, did track. And then the armies where it all picked up. I mean, intensity wise, like being an infantry, you know, the infantry's uh, generally known to be a, a, a pretty grueling path. And then, you know, I, I went through ranger school there too. That was more intense than I cared for. <laughs> um, and, you know, you get to do cool shit like that. We're repelling out of helicopters in some areas and flying in the back of Chinooks and C-130s and 